In today's video, we're covering five different systems or strategies for reducing the amount of sawdust in your shop. The five systems or strategies that we're going to be covering today really apply to both beginner woodworkers as well as big professional shops. The only difference is how much time and money someone is willing to invest in each strategy. Now before we look at the first system, it's important to know the golden rule when it comes to dust collection. And that is, you always want to collect the dust as close to the source as possible before it gets into the air. Now that you know that, let's look at our first system or strategy and that is the use of a dust collector. This is a single stage dust collector, which means that it collects both fine and coarse wood chips in the same bag or container. The other option and what all professional shops have is a two stage system, which includes a cyclone separator, powerful motor and a great filter. The two stage systems use a cyclone separator to separate the heavy solid material from the fine dust material. Basically the fine dust stays at the top of the cyclone and exits out into another container while the larger material slows down and falls down into the storage container below. These systems are really the best, but they're expensive, they require a lot more power, and they take up a lot of space in a shop. So if you're a beginner, more times than not, you don't have the space. So starting with a single stage dust collector and then moving up from there might be the best option for you. I do have to mention before we move on that they do make a cyclone attachment, if you will, for a single stage dust collector to make it a two stage dust collector. They work pretty good at separating the fine from the heavier particles, but they really don't increase the overall power of your machine and they actually decrease the volume of air. Moving on, if you get a single stage dust collector, it's really important to know that these units generally can only handle one to three machines at a time. For example, in my small shop, I have a single stage jet that is rated to move 650 CFM, and it's only good for one to two machines. Now, because I had a lot of old HVAC metal duct work just sitting around the shop, I used that to run my main dust collection lines. I then use simple fittings and blast gates so that I can control each line and never use more than one line at a time. And for the record, HVAC metal duct work is really not designed for woodworking. However, if you need to get something done sort of quick and dirty, you can make it work. Now I show you this system before I upgrade everything to let you know how I started out. And I've actually used this system for many years now. It's rough. It's sort of a Frankenstein of a dust collection system, but for my shop, it has worked pretty well. Now we're not going to get into all the details of how to size and install all of your duct lines for your dust collection system. However, I will give you six important things to think about when designing your system. First, if you get a single stage unit, be sure that it comes with or can be upgraded to a canister filter like this one. This is the simplest way to drastically improve your airflow and quality of collection on your single stage unit. Second, when it comes to your duct work and your fittings, for the beginner, the best option would be to use PVC pipe. It has a very smooth interior surface which reduces the amount of friction which increases airflow and you can pick this up at almost any hardware store. It's also best to keep the runs as short as possible and when you make a 90 degree turn, don't use a 90 like I did but rather two 45 degree elbows to make your 90 degree turn. Third, dust collectors move large volumes of air at low pressure or speed. So it's really important to maintain the same size inlet size or duct size that's coming off of the unit itself. For example, my machine has a four inch inlet so all the duct work running in the shop is the same size. Fourth, don't connect smaller machines like a sander for example to a dust collector. Dust collectors are designed to move large volumes of air, so if you reduce it down to a smaller size, say below a three inch, you're asking the collector to do something it was never designed to do. In those cases, a smaller shop vac would be more suitable for this, and we'll talk about that in a second. Fifth, use as little flex hose as possible. In general, get your solid duct work as close to the machine as possible and then connect the rest of the way with a short flex line. 
And lastly, dust collectors are really only designed for larger machines like table saws or jointers or planers. So when you're thinking about the design for your system, you're only going to want to consider the larger machines you have in your shop. So what about all your smaller machines? Well, that's where the second strategy or system comes into play, and that is to use a shop vac or a smaller dust extractor. Machines like the shop vac and dust extractor move a smaller volume of air, but at high pressure. And because of that high pressure, they work extremely well for routers, router tables, circular saws, and other smaller power tools. Like most beginners, starting off with a shop vac might make the most sense because everyone either has one or needs one for in the shop or simply around the house. Keep in mind though that if you're using these to collect sawdust in your shop, you're going to want to upgrade the filter to a HEPA filter. Higher end vacs like the Festool have HEPA filters built in among many other options, but by no means do you need to own one this nice. But one of the reasons why you would want to buy a higher end vac is because that they have a variable speed motor. Without a variable speed motor, you can't decrease the amount of suction. And with some tools like sanders, for example, too much suction can actually pull the tool tight to the material, causing some issues. So having a higher end vacuum that has variable speed is a nice option, but to get started, most people can make a small shop vac work just fine. As you can see, these smaller vacs are extremely beneficial. They're small, they're portable, you can use them for other cleanup tasks around the shop, and they do a fantastic job at quickly removing sawdust from smaller woodworking machines. The next system is known as an air filtration system, or sometimes called an air scrubber. These units normally hang from the ceiling and use a set of filters to remove the fine sawdust that is floating around in the air. These units are easy to install and most of them come with a variable speed motor, a remote, and the filters are really easy to change. Many of them also have timers that you can set them to run for a few hours after you've left the shop for the day. And as you can see from this side of the filter, which I haven't cleaned yet, they work really well. Again, we do our best to collect the sawdust at the source, but regardless of our best efforts, sawdust gets into the air and that's where these units really shine. The next strategy to reduce sawdust is to work outside. Now this may seem very obvious, but you'd be surprised at how many people forget that this is an option. For example, working outdoors is really great for breaking down large sheet good material with a circular saw or when cutting or sanding material that is very messy like MDF. As a beginner, you most likely don't have all the dust extractors and dust collectors and filters that we're talking about today, so moving your most messy projects outside should help out tremendously. Lastly, number five, if you do not have any means to control or collect sawdust, a respirator and a mask is all you need. Listen, dust collection is mainly about reducing the amount of sawdust that you inhale on a daily basis. Finding the right respirator is key, and if you need help with that, I do have a video that covers dust masks and respirators, and I'll leave a link below and at the end of this video. Obviously, if you can implement more of these strategies, the better you're going to be. But don't feel like you have to have them all right now. You're just getting started. My recommendation would be to first buy a good respirator if you don't already have one. And you got to remember, comfort is key when you're buying a respirator. Next, I would get a good shop vac with a HEPA filter and use that wherever you can in the shop. From there, if you plan on using larger power tools, I would recommend getting a single stage or a two stage system, just all depends on your specific needs. But if you plan on keeping it simple with smaller power tools, you might be able to get away with a good dust extractor and an air filtration system. I hope this was a good introduction into the world of dust collection. Hopefully now you have a better vision of where you need to go as your shop progresses. If you have any questions, you can always hit me up in the comments. Find me on Instagram. That's a great platform to uh, share information with me as well. Thank you so much for watching today's video and supporting Training Hands Academy. I'll see everybody in the next video.